Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jordan here. So I kind of wanted to do a side-by-side -side of the two cameras that I have. Um, I know I've done reviews on them by themselves before, uh, but I kind of wanted to do this as like a side-by-side -side comparison because um, they're pretty similar, but they do have different, different aspects to them. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so most notably to start off, they're both Rebel series. Uh, this is the Canon EOS Rebel SL3, and this is my Canon EOS Rebel T7. So they're both 24 megapixels. Um, they're both part of Canon's budget lineup. Uh, I know you can't really see it, and I'll try to do some, some comparisons, but so... If you look at the size of them, you can obviously tell that one's a lot thinner or a lot smaller than the other. Um, as well as on the back here, you can tell that this one has a articulating screen and this one just kind of has a set screen in place. Uh, I did, however, paint this. Um, this is a Hunter Green, probably the only one in the world, I hope. I think it might be. Um, anyways, so... <clears throat> Flip screen on this is very nice, basically, uh, depending on however you need to get a shot. I mean, you, you got to hold it up. You can flip the screen out like this, do a kind of an overhead shot, or if you got to get down real low, bam, bam. This one, uh, it basically kind of sucks because you just have to throw it into live view mode, sit back, get down, and hope that you get it in frame the first time. Um, they both shoot 1080, uh, 1080, 24, 1080, 30, 1080, 60, 1080, 30, no 24 on this, 4K, 24, no 4K, both have 720p, um, which I'm not really 100% sure, but just let me double check something real quick. All right, so 720, so they're both 720p at 60 frames a second. So if you needed smaller uh, file sizes, you could do high frame rates in a smaller, less sharp quality. Both use a Canon EF mount. So basically Canon EF mount glass is everywhere and you can basically get it, you know, whatever you need. These both shoot 14-bit RAW, so shooting in RAW, you can get 14-bit of color depth. Um, record limits, all right, so 30-minute record limit, 29 minutes and 59 seconds to be exact. Um, if you're shooting video with this, you have 11 minutes and 59 seconds. Um, so kind of sucks, uh, especially this one because, I mean, like me, when I first started, I was using this to basically record all of my YouTube videos and there would be plenty of times where I would get 13 minutes into a video and then have to go back, figure out where I had got cut off and then start recording it back from that. Uh, 30 minutes, I haven't reached 30 minutes of recording limit on this yet. Normally it's somewhere, I mean, maybe 15 to 20 minutes depending. Um, that's with even just setting it up and moving the camera around and stuff, trying to get frame and focus and all that stuff. Uh, continuous autofocus, nine points, dual pixel, dual pixel autofocus in both video and photos. Uh, this has continuous autofocus in photos. So that does a single shot. Autofocus. Let me turn the autofocus on. So, as long as you have the autofocus on the lens, that will do it for you. Um, this basically tracks your uh, subject as you're doing it. So, clear winner on this one. So, the SL3 shoots five frames per second, which is not huge, but for when you need it, it's really good. This is three frames a second. Um, this has a Digic 8 processor 
so this is probably the newer one. This came out in April of 2019. The Canon Rebel T7 has a Digic 4 Plus processor, and this came out in February of 2018. This has a usable ISO from 100 to 25,600, and this one has a usable ISO from 100 to 6,400. Uh, expandable up to 12,800. This one goes up to 51,200. So if you had to choose between the two, depending on what you're looking to do, um, I think for the body, for just the T7, um, is somewhere around the $350 or $400 mark. Um, if you're just buying the body alone, let's say you had a T5 or a T3i or something and you just wanted to upgrade to something newer, you could probably pick up a Canon Rebel T7 body up for around $300, $400 bucks new. The SL3, which is a year newer, and offers, to be honest, I mean, this, this camera right here has become my new favorite daily. Um, I still do like to shoot on the T7, but this right here is a workhorse. Uh, it creates beautiful imagery, beautiful video. Um, so if you wanna buy something a little newer that's a little bit more up to date in tech and has, which I don't know if Canon will ever do firmware updates for this, but they should. Uh, for around $150 more probably that you would buy a T7 kit even. So I think the T7 kits are like 450. The body for this is 550. Um, if you already have glass, the SL3, honestly. Uh, even the SL2, uh, I mean, if you want to get something that's the most new body-wise, I would say an SL3, but as far as I know, the SL2 and the SL3 have very minute differences. I mean, they're pretty much almost the exact same besides a few things. Um, if you're looking to just get a camera that is kind of beginner friendly, where you can shoot it and basically everything, everything right here on the dial, basically if you want to shoot food or macro portraits, you basically just kick it over on the dial to whatever you want, even video, bam, you're good to go. To be honest, the SL3 is more simplistic in a sense that the mode dial and the on and off switch to shoot video, to shoot photos is just, it's, it's all intuitive. I mean, it's all right here. It's so easy. Uh, honestly, when I first picked this up, I was kind of like, uh, it's okay. And then like I used a lot more and a lot more and I just found that this is far superior than a T7. Um, there's only a year's difference in the technology from this to this. So, I mean, February of 2018 to April of 2019. And <clears throat> the SL3 is a lot smaller in comparison. Uh, it's not as bulky. Um, the T7, to me... I mean, it's still good. It fits in your hand. It's pretty bulky. Um, I mean, it definitely when you hold this, you know that you're not going to drop it just because of how big it is. And so it sits in your hand. This, this is more of like a shooter's camera. Um, it's just so ergonomic, it's ridiculous. I mean, to be honest, if you're looking to upgrade or if you're looking for a second camera and you already have EF glass, the clear winner is the SL3, um, if you can swing the price. I mean, just for the body, like I said, it's 550. If you're looking for something that's a good backup camera, but you already have, let's say, like I said, a T5 or a T3i or something, or an SL1 or an SL2, and you wanted something that was just a good backup camera, um, still shoots 24 megapixels, which is really good. Um, low light on this isn't the greatest. I mean, you could 
get you pretty usable images up to 1600 ISO on this. Anything past that's, but yeah. <clears throat> um, great alternative to somebody that wants to either upgrade or is looking to just get their first camera. The T7, somebody that needs a good backup that's gonna perform and do what they need it to do and produce stunning results for even just the body for under 600 SL3. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. I'm Jordan and I'll catch you next time. Peace. Thank you.